are here with our special guest, Hi. Anna Klumski. Yay! Oh my goodness, we have so much to talk about because both Michelle and I are big fans of these. Obsessed. Oh, thank you. Obsessed. I'm, well, I'm big fans of yours. Well, so. You know, there, in one episode in particular, and I tweeted about this, I had to slow it down. I watched it several times. The Mother episode from this last, last season. season. Yeah. It was written by um, a Peter Pe- mm-hmm. what, Hayek. Hike, I think he pronounces it. Hike? Okay. Yeah. And um, what's the other guy's name? And uh, and Alex. Um, oh, my God. Oh, I have it written down right here. Okay. I have it written Don't look down. at me for writers. <laughs> no, because these, an they're so And they're so and they're amazing on that I show. I love them so much. And, they, and they're writing partners. And um, Alex Gregory, Gregory and Peter Alex Gregory Hike. and Peter Hike. Hike. I, I pronounce it Hike. I've never okay. asked him, actually. Yeah. That's rude of me, considering my own last name. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Did I say your last name right? Plumsky. Perfectly. Yeah. Okay. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, they're they're uh, they're some of my. But that people. episode they're in particular, yeah. Mother. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, okay. When you get these scripts and you read through them, are you able to tell? Oh my goodness, this one's it's crazy. This one is so good. Are you able to tell? You know, it's it's a case by case basis, especially last season when we really didn't know the kind of the new tone because uh-huh. we had like a regime change and all yeah. that. Um, so I think. You know, I definitely personally noticed that it was um, bold, you know, yeah. for and and it was going to a more much more personal level than, uh, you know, the the societal level that we were on. Mm-hmm. And it's um, dark, too. It's yeah, very dark, yeah, which totally. is right up my alley. And 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 necessarily so. And um, yeah. And I and I, I love these guys for that. They're really able to um, to satirize, not just only. Not just only society, but but um, but but emotional, the human uh, behavior, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, human behavior, exactly. How but many, I think that's what makes it special. That's what makes it yeah. special. Yeah. How many episodes did they write? Those two guys. Um, uh, they are you they know, executive think, producers of the show. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty. Well, yeah. they're co. They're they're like co yeah. uh, co producers for sure. Um, and they uh, they wrote one of my favorites this season, um, which is very oh God, satirical I, I on I know feminism. that I'm going to get spoiler alerted. I know I am. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean the season you guys the, are we're shooting th- now? I see. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, they uh, they like first of all, you know, a writer's room. I think everybody's got their hand in every episode, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but you know, so so every writer's room is different on who gets their byline on the on mm-hmm. the episode, but. Um, but I know that with Mother, Peter was uh, was very inspired by his own experience. Sure, that's why I think that's why it hits so, so close yeah, to home. Yeah, because everybody understands that. Yeah. Now you, you grow up in in a, a family. Your mother was in show business. Yeah, yeah. And so, as was my father. As was your father. Yeah. How did that affect your experience? I think it's funny. I always hear about. Um, People whose parents didn't let them become artists, and then that was the pressure growing oh, up. Yeah. You know, I was kind of the opposite. I I felt more pressured to be in show business uh, growing up mm-hmm. than um, you know, so that when I maybe wanted to um, wanted to explore like biology yeah. or you know some other kinds of uh, uh, avenues, it was you know my my father would uh, would you know very often just be like stay in show business. <laughs> <laughs> but you were raised in Chicago. I was raised in Chicago, in the city, um, in just outside, still Cook County. So I call it, it's kind of like Queens. It's mm-hmm. like you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> Cook County suburbs are like the outer boroughs. Do yeah. your parents still live there? Uh yeah, both, both, both do. In West Side, yeah. Because you would drop, but they're but they're divorced. I mean, they've been divorced since I was two. You dropped out of show business for a minute to go to college. What did you mm-hmm. study in college? I studied international studies, which is international relations. Mm. Did know, that? Yeah. What? What? How? Okay, so how does one? <laughs> Make money <laughs> in school. International, yeah. international, international study. relations would be um, theoretically. Um, I I was really ready to take my foreign service exam and work for the State Department. Oh. Really? Yeah, that kind of thing. But then I I looked at the study guide for the the foreign service exam and I was like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, <laughs> right. What excited right. you about the thought of going into school for international studies? I loved. Well, first of relations. all, yeah. The, I mean, the cool thing is, right, with any um, with any of our universities, you start off with the liberal arts kind of yeah. core, and University of Chicago is really big on the core. Um, so I didn't really know what I was going in for, and then. You take a class and it just really inspires you. And so I, I took a class my freshman year, spring quarter, called the History of Ulster, which was about Northern Ireland and the, and right. the, all of the political slash war history, which is still of going Northern on. Ireland. Always, yeah. always, mm-hmm. yeah, Sinn Fein and all that mm-hmm. jazz. And um, 
<laughs> Sinn Féin and all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new musical. I smell I it. I smell it. it. Brilliant. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there was just a really engaging TA. He was a fantastic uh, teacher, and he made it really interesting. And I thought, I want to study political history. Wow. Um, so that's, yeah. And then that particular major <clears throat> required a language. It had a language requirement. Right. So you could study abroad and kind of get uh, get favored if you needed to Well, to in Ireland, programmed. you're all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't go there. I went to Brazil. Well, um, and, and did you learn uh, your Portuguese? I and... sure did. Yeah. Wow. Cloud of Cassini. Cloud of Cassini. Wow. wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So, okay, so how much time did you spend in Brazil? That was, well, when I officially studied, it was just a summer. But right. I had been there, I had been there a few times before, and and, and I've been there a few times since. In S- San Paulo? I've, uh, I studied in Salvador, wow. uh, which I made sure to pronounce uh, uh-huh. the American way just now. Yeah. And, because <laughs> I'm, I'm pretentious like that, and yeah. I get in trouble. How do you do it the Brazilian way? Salvador. Salvador. Isso. Uh. Um, but I had been to Rio a few times before that, and then I'd, I'd kind of gone around the Northeast. Um, uh, but I studied in Salvador, and then uh, I had gone to Sao Paulo just for like three days for a wedding that didn't end up happening. Oh, my oh no! Um, later on, yeah. But I loved Sao Paulo. It was uh-huh. brilliant. It no, was everything. I mean, it was every. It was like my own psyche because it was Brazil. But it was, but it functioned, <laughs> yeah, and was like New York. So it was, yeah. it, it was, yeah, it was very much like the my brain. most beautiful people on the planet. By the way, are in Brazil. It's well, ridiculous. Not going to argue beautiful. that, it's, it's especially the men. The especially men. The men. Yeah. <laughs> yes, people go crazy for the yeah. women, and they're very famous for yeah. being yes. beautiful. Yes, but they don't talk about how good the oh men. Oh my are. goodness! It's and all about the, the men. And, I know. Even top, but like, and the and the very there's a very particular type of speedo. It's not the. <laughs> It's not quite a thong. It's, it's not, not quite a bikini. It's right. not the yeah. it's not a swimmers. It's yeah. ju- it's like for the surfers yeah. and the capoeiristas and the you know they're playing soccer on the beach. Uh-huh. That it's it's ju- it's a short. Yeah. It's a boy oh, short. Oh yeah, uh-huh. I know the sh- I know it Holy very well. Geez. Very well. But you know the combination of people. Um, I don't know how they did this, but. People with really dark skin and light green eyes. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. they did it. They did it by colonialism. Is yeah, what they, that's yeah. what they did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so beautiful. You know, the first time I went to Brazil was in '95, and we had heard horror stories: mm-hmm. losing the, kidneys, losing yeah. kidney. Oh, okay. So we brought the the bare minimum with right. us. Yeah, the bare minimum. Yeah, you want, and you like put all your jewelry mm-hmm. away yes. and all. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I swear, we thought we were gonna leave there without one of our kidneys. Mm-hmm. You know, it's I always it's like. There, it's an it's like an abusive relationship, Brazil, because it's it's you fall madly in love, but then it really beats you up. Yeah, with one or, like one way or another, someone has an experience somewhere. Like sure. we like we were there when there was a police strike. Uh huh. But that's <laughs> oh. recently. So there, well, no, this was in this was in two thousand because they're having oh. one. They're having one now. Yeah. Oh, Clara. Okay. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um. Of course. But uh, but yeah, and so. You know, there there was a curfew. People were like getting mugged everywhere because it was just yeah, it was like two weeks of kind of martial law. Well, this because, was around the Olympics recently, which is why that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that well, and also right now with with the crazy government. Yes, and, you know. And, oh my goodness! Now, okay, <sighs> so now you went to the University of Chicago. I knew someone who went there, and they would always tell me about. Howard's Chicken and Waffles. Do you know that place? Howard, well, <laughs> we... Howard's Chicken and Waffles. <laughs> Where? Yeah, there's... In the University of Chicago. Oh, oh. We, um, we like, um, oh my God, why am I blanking? It's on 53rd Street and Obama had them um, cater. Harold's. Harold's. Harold, that's what I'm talking yes, about. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. That's what I'm Close Harold. enough. Close enough. Harold's. Harold's. Yes. Yes. But I, yes. Th- I actually think there's a Howard somewhere. But this uh. is but this is roasted chicken. Oh. Um, not meaning, fried. No. Well, I, I think it means that they they pressure fry it. Like, it's just not uh-huh. breaded, maybe. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's like a loose Did you say it was roasted? Roasted. Roasted. You know what I'm saying. What? Bro ham. I mean, I'm in. I want that roasted chicken. I am in. But it's, and it's, I mean, it's got that bank, it's got the bank window. The bank teller window, uh-huh. you know, where you like you have to pay, and then oh and yeah, then it's oh like yeah. The bank window. Is it was is the University of Chicago in a, in a tough neighborhood? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know, it, it gentrifies as anything does, yeah. but um, but but yeah, South Side is kind of. 
you know, notorious for being for being harder than the rest. No, you know, I but I, West Side's pretty bad. Through. I did not go to college. I am a high school dropout. That's okay. We love you anyway. But, but you know, the funny thing about that is, I always think that I think it's important to go somewhere. If you don't have to go to college, at least go somewhere. Yeah. Where you can meet your constituency, meet the people you're going to be working with True. for the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. I, in, in essence, I did go to a college. It's called the Pyramid life. Club in oh, East yes, Village. Exactly. That was my university. That, I, yeah, we went there too. And we have there was. Lots of roasted chicken Indeed. up in there. I'm looking it up, and the pictures look real good. For, for Harold? But for Harold. But it's then excellent. you also have Luminati's. You have so many yeah. amazing things. Yeah, and that's things. my favorite for deep dish. That's, yeah, Luminati's. Luminati's? Yeah. Lou Malnati. Yeah. It sounds Not like Luminati. Yeah. Different. Yeah. <laughs> Lou Malnati's. Lumin- Chicago. There's it's, plenty. There's a chain. It's yeah, they're all over. Yeah, but it's the deep dish like this. You yeah. cut into it. It's yeah. just like, oh, yeah. your teeth just sink That's my favorite for deep dish. Yeah. However, Chicago Pete, like, the Chicago pizza that I love and it's before deep dish happened was is what they call tavern pizza huh. which is they they um it's very thin and they cut it in squares so yeah. you like always fight for the corner yeah right that's that's what I crave that's that's like you don't get that in New York that's, but you don't get that in New York no you do in Brooklyn at Spomoni Gardens that's like what, what they're notorious they're I gotta legendary go there for. then I've yeah. been in Brooklyn for what I mean for 14 years have you lived in, you lived in Brooklyn for 14 years and I've never been there and you never went to Spomoni no. Gardens Spomoni Gardens where is Spomoni Gardens Bensonhurst I believe and I'm, I'm like shouting now. at you I just it's okay <laughs> Take it. Everybody does. I'm abused. This coffee's very strong. Very strong. That's what it is. That's okay. Ah. Now, okay, so um, oh, we have so much to talk about. Okay, so I'm going to double back to Yeah, 86th finding... Street, Bensonhurst. Okay. It's 86th oh, Street Ridge? in, in Bensonhurst, that's kind yeah. Of that, that's like on the... On it's called the... L&B Spamoni Gardens. They're <gasps> legendary because of their... Because of Square. Bed. Because that's in in New York... I mean, you know, we all love good New York pizza, but yeah. yeah, I, you know, as a Chicagoan born and raised, I, I do miss the squares. I don't, I, you know, every once in a while, right. I don't need a big old and slice. And so, in, if you're in Chicago, where do you get the tavern pizza? Where's the place to go? I like a place. I mean, you can get it kind of anywhere. Yeah. But, um, but I like a place called uh, Villanova, which is in uh, the western suburbs. Which isn't, yeah, it's it's technically Pictures. in Stickney, Illinois. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's oh, but that's like Sicilian. Well, that's what uh. we, the regular people, would call Sicilian pizza. <laughs> Right, right. Okay. But for them, it's it's the best pizza. Okay, I'm going to try it because yeah. I like it. But this is this is thin oh. and round, and they do that in squares. Oh, oh wow. yum, yum. That's I mean, I'm it, down. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So you you're, you're from Chicago. And <laughs> I'm you in. I love that you just looked it up for me, though. Just want I, you to say. I, I, like perfect. I could no, we could look up food all day, all day. <laughs> you, my my father, in, in addition to being in show business, was also a chef. So my husband's yeah. from Chicago, so I understand the foodie. <laughs> Uh-huh. Life in Chicago. Yeah, it's yeah. different. Italian beef is the big thing. Yeah, but. and so now, so you, so you you decide to go to <laughs> University of Chicago, yes. even though you're from Chicago. Yeah, why, why is that? I think okay. There's a bunch. <laughs> well, no, I know. No, I want to get go away. away. Yeah. Smart. And I did apply. This is it's this is probably too boring of a story, but I I did apply to many other um, colleges in other uh, states and cities. However, University of Chicago was my um, my favorite, mm-hmm. and so I applied their early uh, decision, and their um, their acceptance came out before I had to send out the other applications. Mm-hmm. So I actually just saved my money, my application fees, and didn't end up sending those other applications. Are so, you happy about it in the I, end? Oh my gosh, so much. So I mean, I met my husband there, and really, you know, yeah, yeah. So and okay, so now I, I'm I'm going to be doubling back a lot with this. I'm fine with it. The 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 college thing. I, <laughs> I don't think young people understand how important it is to find your comrades early in life because the mm-hmm. people I met at the Pyramid Club. Yeah, I'm still working with them today. See, and it's, See? it's such a huge deal. Yeah. yeah, no, that's such a huge deal. Yeah, uh, and also it's that it's it's who you meet in your in your early twenties too. Mm-hmm. I think it's you know. Cause I, cause you know, I did school and then I moved to New York and I kind of had my other, I, I had like my own version of, of finding my tribe of, mm-hmm. of actors once I decided to be an actor and Wait, went but you were and an actor before. There. Yes. And then yeah. you left to go to school. Yes. And I just don't, I mean, I personally don't count acting as a kid other than like maybe having my SAG card from 1986, which I love to like throw around for anybody who needs the quantifiable like, <laughs> definition of how long you've yeah. been in the business. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't. I personally don't count my acting career um, earlier than than like 2004 because that's when I started on my own and like on purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went to Atlantic and trained and. Um, 
and did a whole new What's kind Atlantic? of tribe finding. That's a that's an acting school in New York that uh-huh. uh, that was founded by uh, Mamet and William H Macy. Really? Yeah. William H Macy. Mm-hmm. That one. And David that Mamet. One, the brilliant actor and David Mamet. And David Mamet. Yeah. And where is Atlantic? That's um in Chelsea on Sixteenth. Uh, NYU. No. It's connected to NYU, mm. uh, but but many are NYU Tisch. Like they connect right. themselves to a bunch of acting schools, so you um, can get credit. Yeah, like playwrights, it. Atlantic, Neighborhood Playhouse, Stella Adler. They like do all of those. Yeah. Um. So Atlantic's one of those. But um. But yeah, I think it's not. Yeah, it's on 16th, like between 9th and 10th by Highline now, which didn't exist then. Yeah, and the, so okay, so I want to talk about this differentiation from being a child actor to mm. um 2004 when you you decided to say, I am now a real actor. Mm. Did, what did that entail? Is it being able to let go of inhibitions? That's what that's what training to be an actor does, you know, in, in that you go to, I think, this is what I think, tr- that children are truthful by nature. Mm-hmm. That's why we say, like, out of the mouths of babes. And, mm-hmm. and naughty by nature. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I think they are people. always. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and... As an adult, you have to go back to train to be an actor to remember how to be a kid, I mm-hmm. think is what it is. So mm-hmm. it's like re- it's starting to learn to remove inhibitions. For me, the difference between acting as a kid and acting as an adult was was basically whose choice it was and for whom you are doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, as a kid, you know, everything you do is to get the approval of adults. That's yeah. how you learn to be a human being is like, mm-hmm. is this OK? Is this, you know, you learn all your limits by getting the approval of adults. And so. You know, if uh, if a kid is like me, who's kind of precocious and has, you know, and, and can say lines cute and all that, then you're getting the approval of the adults. Right. Um, and that just doesn't feel as great when you're in high school and you mm. don't get the approval of an adi- of yeah. all the adults. And, you know, now you're you're growing, you know, boobs and you're growing zits and people are like, oh, we don't like you now. And um, so, yeah, it's just not as um it's not as organic and and nourishing to the soul as it, yeah. you know when you're trying to do it as an adolescent especially um so then as an adult i would go and i was done like i wasn't paying my dues i was like i was over mm-hmm. show business mm-hmm. and but i would go to a broadway show or i would see a great movie or some good tv was coming out at that time sopranos deadwood all that mm-hmm. and i would get inspired but i would get inspired because of the performances and and how they were communicating them to me, um, I or the text. You know, I, I the big day for me was I saw the goat or who is Sylvia by De, by Edward Albee, mm-hmm. um, and Mercedes Rule was in that, and she was she just killed it. Mm. And I, you know, stood up because we all stand up now these days. Yeah, and, but I but I really did think it deserved a standing O. And I was standing up and I and I said even out loud in front of my mom, I said I have to do that. And this was like two years before I got back in the business. Mm-hmm. Um, because it was frightening to me to, you know, face rejection and all that. Sure. And, um, but it, she just, she made me feel that role and that story so much in the live experience that I was like, that's what it is. That's mm-hmm. what acting is. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and at the same time, it's like, I always, I always loved, you know, Vivian Lee and I always loved Betty Davis and, you know, and that's the same kind of thing is the idea of communicating a brilliant text to its audience, like being the bridge. Yeah. Um, in that in that rawness, which is so amazing. Yeah. Well, I want to talk. So that's about... what I wanted to do, and I, you know, and I did it. <laughs> and got... I am. And I'm doing it. And you're doing it, and doing it so well. <laughs> Thank you. We've got Anna Klumsky here. We're going to take a quick break, but we got so much to talk about. I still have so many questions about Veep, which you, you're in the process of filming now. Yes. And uh, oh my god, I, we'll be right back after this. <laughs> I just love the whole concept of the loot crate. Yeah. The loot crate has so much gorgeous stuff, especially if you're into, you know, Marvel Comics or if you're into, you know, Fallout 4, which I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's a huge game. Really? Huge game. It's just the Harry Potter stuff. Yes. Listen, this is a subscription uh, box service for epic geek and gamer items and just Pop culture gear, yeah, t-shirts in in every box. All that there's t-shirts, there's um, pins, there's figures, there's all sorts of stuff, and you can kind of tailor it to what you want. All you got needs, all you guys need to do is make sure you go to lootcrate.com/ru, enter that code RU, and save three dollars off any new subscription today. And I'm telling you, do it for yourself, but it's also a killer gift, fantastic yes. gift. Check it out. All right, we are back with Anna Klumsky. We are big fans of Veep, mm. and uh, you know <clears throat> the. the 
I want to go back to the script for a minute because um, I don't know how the, these brilliant actors are able to turn that script. It doesn't it's a magic. feel like it's scripted. It feels right. so real. And of course, it's shot in a sort yeah. of a, a reality TV Docu. style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Docu series. And, and, and when you is it one camera? It is. I mean, it's single cam, but we have two, we had two, and then I think now we have three sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah, but but they but it's it's Multi, not done. But it's not feed. multicam. It's not right. you know a fixed um, and with an audience or anything. Obviously, you even it's, nominated three t- four times for that show. Yeah, four times for that one show. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. It's crazy. It's, uh, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Deservedly so. Thank tell, you. Tell me about the process of doing it. Uh, you know, obviously it's an ensemble cast, and everybody is so brilliant. You and know, before you get so into lucky. that, are you allowed to have? Since we're talking about the script, is there playroom? Or it is it all depends on it all depends on who's um on, well it depends mostly on how much time we have mm-hmm. um and that depends then on how big the script is that we have to film we always overshoot like the like the scripts okay I should probably start chronologically this was created by and a man speak named it, Armando do it in Inucci. English yeah do it in English this yes. time yeah not Portuguese. <laughs> Because it's been really hard to translate. Oh, that's what happened. <laughs> I misunderstood. Uh, <laughs> um, so this was created by a man named Armando Yanucci, who is a genius. And he's he's Scottish. He's from the UK. And he, um, you know, has a comedy pedigree in the UK that was all built on this this process he's discovered, which is kind of a hybrid of writing workshop slash improv workshop slash Meisner work. So he, uh, and he didn't know he was making it that way. He just does it organically. Mm -hmm. And he, um, so, so the way that this was originally um, built and created was, was by his process, which is you, they come up with a script. He has fantastic writers that he always takes with him. Um, They come up with a script we all read it in the table, and then we get on our feet, and we just play out scenes and play out scenarios. Without the script? With the usually script? Usually the script aside. Sometimes yeah. we'll have it just to have the beats, but usually we'll, after like once or twice, we'll probably, we'll, we'll put stuck, you know, uh, tuck it in our in our jeans in the back and mm-hmm. just go. Um, because you know the outline is there. You know right. where you're supposed to go. Yeah, you just kind of like look at the beats and know what, what scene you're in. Like I'm not improv trained. We have a lot of brilliant like improv OGs in our yes. show and we're mm-hmm. so lucky. Um, but the the cool thing for those of us who are not improv trained, who are more classically trained, um, who are also on the show is is – Arm and his in his process never was looking for jokes. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about coming up with funny. It was just about living out the characters and figuring out what would come naturally, and then he would find the funny in it. Uh-huh. You know, and the writers would find the funny in it. Um, and a lot of the time, it was hilarious. And uh, some of our our funniest things in the first four seasons were were discovered that way, mm-hmm. um, especially with people like Matt and Julia and, and Tony Tim Hale. and yeah, Tony and Jesus. I mean it's, oh, it's just a, yeah an embarrassment of riches yeah um, so that's how the Veep process was originally mm-hmm. and then it it you know and then it, it it evolves because of the different people involved or different directors come in and they have the stuff they're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it changed even more when when Arm uh, left the show and we we got Dave Mandel, who's mm-hmm. who did last season and this season and his writers. And um, and so then they look for different they, they have a different system and they have a different process with if we're workshopping or if we're, we're not. So, um, you know, sometimes I, I know Dave Dave is really into kind of throwing us what we call alts, which are alternative lines, mm-hmm. um, while we're shooting and just throwing them out there. And okay, this take you say this. Okay, this take you say this. You know, or this take open up the suitcase and there's going to be wallets. And next next take you open up the suitcase and there's going to be you know a, a dildo or you know like yeah. it's <laughs> and that really happened last night. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not even making that up. <laughs> I love that. It, the um, process seems so interesting and and so interesting. Kit and it shows on the show because it's just so amazing to watch. So many layers and mm, so much organic. texture it's yeah. so is there. Organic. Yeah, thank you. Gosh, thank you. That's it's wonderful to hear. You know, we're shooting uh, season six now, and it's just it's it's very encouraging to hear 
um, uh, intelligent o- audience members uh, say that it still feels organic, which yeah. is awesome. But, uh, you know, the audience... <laughs> means we're doing our job. Yes, <laughs> you are. This is really, this really is the sort of second golden age of television. Oh, and I think definitely. people who have a certain intellect and who even just are there for just yuck, yuck laughs right. are attracted to this show because it relates on so many different levels. We were talking yes. about the episode Mother, yeah. which just really blew me away. Oh, I'm so it blew me away. I can't wait to tell the guys. You well, I haven't gotten to it yet because I'm only on season two. I oh, just wow. started because I was late to the game. That's okay. And somebody said, you should watch Veep. You'd love it. And I love Julia. Yeah. Yes, obviously. Yeah. obviously. Yeah. There's nothing she cannot do. Like, it's... she can do anything. I'm, I'm so lucky to work with such an inspiring female like i'm in in every way possible because also i've you know i've uh i've gestated two children on this show and she did that on seinfeld yeah, yeah. so like it, on a personal level the support she gives on a professional level and a creative level the support she gives it's <laughs> just stated so, like just an elephant two children? <laughs> she just stated she had she had two I kids was pregnant twice <laughs> on the show and, and they just sort of gave you a big purse at times we, or we, didn't, we didn't have to hide it too much because mm-hmm. i it was always the beginning of the of of the pregnancy right. so yeah. do you know who the fathers of the kids <laughs> are are they two different fathers <laughs> he lives with me he says oh. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> he claims <laughs> To be. <laughs> so, right. But, but, you know, actually, Michelle, it was the episode, the mother episode that was nominated for an Emmy this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. That, yeah, that it was. episode. Mm-hmm. Which, and season five? five. That was okay. five. five. All right. Yeah. 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 I'll shoot, get there. Do you guys shoot out here in Hollywood? Now we do. Since uh, since the change. Yeah. So last oh, since season. since David Mandel took over. Mm-hmm. Where was it before? Baltimore. What? Really? <laughs> Baltimore? Yes. Why? Yes, indeed. Proximity to DC, um, tax breaks. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. HBO already kind of had a foot in the door in Baltimore because of The Wire. Oh, of uh, course. Yeah. So, Great yeah, series. all of those. And also, it was on the East Coast, and, uh, and all of our guys sure. used to be from the UK. So, it was it was a nice kind of yes, thing. Yeah, true. You know, um, they make fun of the guy who plays Jonah on the show, but for He's my brilliant. own um, sort of sick, twisted, sort of sexual. Tony thing, Hale. No, Tim no, Simons. Tim, Tim Simons. Simons. Uh, he plays Jonah, the one they make oh, fun of. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, I love Which, him. Which, by the way, is the icon of our show, in my opinion. I mean, I find I feel like he's so unsung, uh-huh. and I feel like this, you know, um, th- when this decades from when this show ends, people will still yeah, think of Jonah. So exactly. People will still, like, he's very he, you. He is so, the icon. I if I had to so line sexy. up that cast for yeah. who Rue would have the hot score, <gasps> yeah. it would be Tony Hale yeah. and right? him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and you're oh, right. I Tony Hale too. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. I can't wait to tell these No, guys. oh my God. But um, you guys understand why he, he's sexy though? Do you see what I, I see? see? It. I see yeah. it. I mean, I see it for sure, but yeah. I also know the, the, the person. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I find the character sexy. No, I care. I'm thinking just his body alone. He's you. I love that body. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. He's yeah. all real. For no, it's true. It's yeah. true. I, you know, I, I told you I saw the movie, um, the 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 uh, Melissa McCarthy movie on the plane three the, times. Uh, He's in the, that Tammy, too. Uh, Tammy, no, Michelle, no, no. The, the, boss. No, the boss. No, the boss. The boss. The boss. Yes. He's the boss. in the boss. I just watched it. You just watched I just, it. I was so preoccupied by the, the turtlenecks. Thing. And they never explain uh, that. No, and I said it must be a character choice. It's a character choice. But it was bothering the shit out of me. You haven't seen the boss? Huh? She well, she's friggin' Larry. Another genius. Good. Oh, she's incredible. Yeah. Huff she's incredible. for friggin' Larry. <laughs> she goes. <laughs> All she goes the, all like out. Julia. Yes. She goes all she goes the all way. The way. Yeah. And Julia, like Lisa Kudrow, like Melissa McCarthy, yeah. there's only a select few that can do that awkward <laughs> thing and own it. Yes. Like make nobody's it, yeah. business. Yeah. And yeah. still make it truthful yes. and make sense. And, yeah. Yeah, and Julia and Lisa showboating. are yeah. two of the best. Oh my goodness. Well, Jonah is in that movie. Oh, What's his name? Timothy Tim Simons. Simons. <laughs> Tim Simons. Yes. Yes. And I was just, I just did something with, Brilliant um, actor. with um, uh, yes. uh, the, the guy um, who's um, Black Eye from Saturday Night Live who I did match game with Garrett, Tim, Tim, Garrett. oh Tim um, Meadows Tim Meadows one? Tim Meadows, oh, yeah. Tim Meadows. Oh, okay. he they were all Eddie Murphy no <laughs> I know. He, they were all in Chicago um, him with um, Amy Sedaris they were all okay. in Chicago at Second City with the guy who plays um, um, the Veeps 
ex-husband, who they say is oh, a brilliant... David Pasquazi. Yeah, David Pasquazi. OG. Who I, know, OG. I know him from yeah. Amy's show, yeah. uh, mm-hmm, uh, Stranger mm-hmm. with Candy. Yeah, but like, he's, he's kind of like the Thelonious Monk for improv yes, actors. That's, like, that's what they said. Yeah, like improv actors kind of... I mean, they sweat around him. Like, yes. Yeah, he's, he's, he's phenomenal. Well, another, he's a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> and another sex machine in my yeah. book. Yeah, it's another yeah. one that Rue would love. Yeah. Just the it's nose the alone. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, yeah, okay. the voice and the nose. I'm, I love I love a He plays that character so well though because it's that thing where you don't know why it went awry and you don't know why you know and uh-huh. like you can see why they're together we're, we're together yes. and then you can see why it fell exactly. apart and it's yeah I love and that and how they're able to infuse those characters with is yeah. it on the page or is it them it's both it's really both and I and especially when we were building these characters I think it was that you know, again, that process where the writers are seeing what we can bring, but they're but they're curating the these qualities of the characters that they can find um, from what we have already, and then they can just grow it. No, it's, as an actor, it's a master class. It's it's, it's like it's a master yeah, class. It really is. I yeah. yeah. Gosh. But as an I actor, when lucky. you're doing that process, you explained earlier that uh, where you would do this improv slash um, script. You read the script, then mm-hmm. you, you sort of. What does it feel like on the inside of your body when you're conscious of yourself being in the room doing? What does it feel like? Are you thinking, oh, maybe I should try this, or maybe, should, or what is that? I don't, and that's. But I think at where all of us come from a different school like all of us and so that and I think that that's another kind of um, uh, secret key to the chemistry in our show is that we all bring something else you know some some of us are more physical some of us are more improv some of us are more sitcom some of us are more classical some you know and so um, so for me I just always treat that as you know committing in the scene get get your intention from your partner mm-hmm. and then see what happens um, I think some of us, uh, you know, are really good at writing on their feet, mm-hmm. uh, like Matt, like like Tim. Mm-hmm. Um, they're and uh, oh God, like Sam Richardson, who's on our, who's uh, who came onto our show third season, and mm-hmm. he plays uh, Richard. Oh, is that and, the black guy? Yeah. Oh yeah. my God! <laughs> oh my God! How does he do that? I just he's, brilliant. He's brilliant, oh and he's like God. he's like one of my dearest friends on the show, wow. and I just love him to death. Um, but he's freaking phenomenal, and so. Um, you know, and they're really like masters at, at writing on their feet like that, yeah. right? Where so maybe they're coming up with stuff like that, uh-huh. like you say, like they're you know. Um, but uh, but I don't. When I have the pressure to come up with stuff or to mm-hmm. make a laugh, you know, it's that thing where you yeah. uh, you know, be funny now, yeah, or yeah. like don't ask for you know, don't ask for the laugh, ask for the tea, you know, and don't so, ask for the last at laugh, ask for the tea. It's what a does classic that mean? Barrymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher the whole tale, mm. but. Uh, but <laughs> do it, Anna, like a, do it. But, but there's like a Barrymore quote where um, you know somebody said, uh, you know, somebody said, oh, you know, in 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 that scene, I I didn't, you know, nobody laughed, and and there was like a huge laugh uh-huh. um, the night before, so then they try to do it again the next day, and uh, I want to say it's like Lionel Barrymore who said, well, you know, well, um, yesterday you asked for the tea, today you asked for the laugh. You know, uh-huh, mm, right? Mm. I think it, I don't think it was Bear. I think it was one of the um Lander, the, Lund- La- the Lander sisters. Oh, it was the Lander sisters. <laughs> Audrey, <Yeah. laughs> probably Audrey Lander. Yeah, I like how I was I was along for that <laughs> for a second, and then <laughs> gullible. Yeah, I'm like, oh yes, the, Lan- the no. Lander sisters. Yes, no. We're gonna take a quick break. <laughs> it could have been a Lunt, though. It could have been a Lunt. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna take a break. It was a Del Rubio triplet. Actually, I'm finding too. that here. Yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> I just love my Today Ticks, Michelle. You were the one who turned me on to it, and I thank you every day. <laughs> you know How easy is it? It couldn't be easier. Yeah. You know, when I used it the first time in New York, uh, the guy was waiting for us out in front of the theater. And, you know, a lot of it used to be when you wanted to go see a Broadway show, it was so hard to get the tickets. Uh, you know, it, you, you got to be there an hour. You got to go to Will Call. You had to plan yes. in advance. Yeah. This made it so easy. In fact, we decided to go see the show Probably an hour before. Yep. And we were able to get those tickets. Great seats. Yes. I am. I thank you so much it's, for it's turning me on to this. I'm life, serious. No, I'm dead serious. It's life changing. And here's the thing. Not only is it like a concierge service, so it's easy to get the tickets and they just meet you outside. You go mm-hmm. pick it up with the person with the red jacket. But you're we're leaving out the biggest part. You get a huge discount. You get a huge discount. Gone are the days of standing in lines at TKTS. Yeah. Yeah. And we're talking about over 80 musicals, comedies and dramas. 
In New York alone. Hello. It's in so many cities right now, too. London, San Francisco, L.A., D.C., Chicago, Seattle, Philadelphia, and honey, more cities are coming. So stay tuned to that. Today, Tix gives you access to insider deals and exclusive offers. Just like I said, you save so much money, guys. You can get tickets up to 50% off in just a few taps of that little finger. And today, Tix would like to offer you... 20 bucks off your first purchase with the code RU. So download Today Ticks. It's a little red and white app. It's free. You know where to get it. That's Today Ticks, T I X, or go to todayticks.com to see what's playing this week and treat yourself to a show. All right, we are back with Anna Klumski. You've got two kids. I do. How old are the babies? Uh, three mm-hmm. and four months. Four wow. months. Yeah. And was did you plan these children or they just sort of. <laughs> were delivered. I wanted them. Yeah. Um, And we, you know, so we planned when we were going to pull the goalie Mm -hmm. each time, but we Mm -hmm. didn't, uh, but, you know, you kind of know not to, not to, I mean, yeah, you can't schedule this shit. Right, right. Can I say shit on it? Yes, you may. You can say whatever you want. Now, when you're, (laughs) I I thought about this in the shower this morning. I was thinking, now, why, you know. In the shower. In the shower. I was thinking, Okay. As your sperm okay. was falling down when the drain. You're deciding to have a child. Does ever does it come to your mind? You think, do I really want to bring a kid into this world? You know, we had that moment. This t- oh god, this last labor. Um, we were like, it's sh- a little too late by labor. Just gonna <laughs> yeah, say that's that. True. I know. Just gonna that's put true. that out there. Yeah. I know, but this is what we did because, of course, you're kind of like in epidural land, and you're yes. like, you know, oh gosh, this is <laughs> happening. And and I said to I said to my husband, I was like. The guys are so intimate, guys. But I said, um, you know, I don't know this world. I'm like, this is, you know, life can be really hard. What am I doing? And then I said, push. I, yeah. And I said, hurry, let's just list the things we love about life mm. uh-huh. right now. Let's just list them. And cheese came up a lot. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I love cheese. Woman to woman, just I understand that. Different yeah. kinds cheese, of cheese and chocolate. Uh-huh. Cheese and chocolate. <laughs> yeah. I was like mm. camembert. Yeah. And I was like brie. Gouda. Yes. Aged gouda. Oh, gouda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you know we can we do have cheese to thank yeah for um for the hope we now have and what did as, you name as your... fucked as the world is and right she... now we at least will still have Rockford right? and and is that what you named your kid Rockford yes Rockford no yeah. <laughs> love it she's Clara Clara Aww. Elizabeth yes yeah. and her sister is Penelope Joan but I think about you know some of the things that my um my hillbilly parents passed on right. to me that I've had to work through therapy and try to sort of you know sh- oh, yeah. cleanse yeah. my my consciousness of, of certain things. Everything. I would not want to pass on a lot of that that Michigas to my kids. There's a lot of anxiety about that. There yeah. is. And especially like my fir- with my first and I think with your first it's it's just freakier because you've never even experienced any of this. Um, and when I found out it was a daughter I did have like I, I thank goodness I found out early and I didn't have like the surprise because I needed the five months to kind of process mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because of our own mother daughter sure. stuff. And I love my mom very much, but there's mother daughter stuff. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And so I was really can't free, get around it. You know, you and you yeah. can't. And that's the thing. You know, we're all going to make mistakes and and that's going to be great fodder for their creativity someday. Yeah, sure and um, yeah. And I, uh, you know, I just, you know, if you're if you're leading with love and you're doing your best not to take but to give, mm-hmm. like those are my two goals. Mm-hmm. And um, and I also, you know, I, I I talk a big game, and I hope that I can stand to this when they're teenagers. But my thought is, you know, they can hate me as much as they want as long as they love themselves. Right. Like that's what I. That's what it's I it's tough, and it's, it's a great place to be. Mm. I have two teenage daughters, yeah, and um, I, all I can say is prepare yourself because people like to joke about it. It's really hard. And in this yeah. day and age, Anna, it's even harder because yeah. this shit, this social media stuff, it's important that like we've now implemented this. You have to unplug for at least yeah. an hour every night yeah. because good. Good. it does ruin them in a sense that you can be the best parent that you know how to be and but you're doing everything happening. right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and there's so much and... negative shit out oh, there mm-hmm. that it infiltrates even with the best of intentions. Mm-hmm. My brother, my brother uh, is 14 years younger than me and wow. I, and I cut the cord. I was there. I was, I, mm-hmm. I, I, Oh wow. Isn't that cool? Oh yeah. Wow. Um, but, and, uh, and yeah, he'll, if he hears this, he'll roll his eyes. He's like, well, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but he, um, but he, you know, I always joke that he was like my practice kid, but I did watch, him go through teenagerdom and you know and it was right when like he was 13 14 right when facebook and Mm -hmm. myspace Uh uh and all that stuff started and so no one really knew what it was yet 
And, you know, a lot of his peers and, you know, there's there's a whole thing where they're like, oh, you know, I'm they're on. He's he's blessedly, um, you know, not had to medicate himself or anything. But, mm-hmm. he, you know, there's people and boys are life. very different than girls. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But there but there are people you know, in his age group that are are um, very kind of out to sea. Mm-hmm. And and I, I told him, I was like, well, you know my theory on why your age group. And he's like, oh, is it because college essays are too hard? And I was like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, those are, come stop it. Like, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, well, there's the, but I said, I said, I do think it's because, well, yeah, too much homework is a real thing. And too yeah. much well, too really much homework, with, we don't yeah. need to go here because yeah. it gets really deep and yeah. probably boring. But I will no, say this. Mm-hmm. There's a core of these, like my daughter included, my 16-year-old, a yeah. uh, core of these kids who believe that uh, there's this new movement, which is actually encouraging and yeah. really good, that they don't like... My daughter has had such anxiety because of the way the educational system yep. is is made, and yeah. the fact that we didn't fight it in our years mm-hmm. pisses her off. Mm. So she hates the core, the core technique, whatever it's called, Common right. Core. Right. They right. hate the fact that you know testing is not teaching. Like they're all yeah. Re- yeah. rebelling it. Yeah, but. It ends up hurting them, yeah. bec- them because they feel they're like they're still in the system. Cor- they're, they're not out there. of the system yet. Yeah, the right. system hasn't changed yet. They're Correct. The, yeah, I know yeah. it's hard. It's, so the, they have this the is, balls. Yeah. They just don't know where to focus. Exactly. Right. Right. No, it's it's it, that's the hard. So thing I understand. About change and yeah. Which yeah. Like, you but, say? I, but my theory was that it's because especially his age group, they were growing up in adolescence, which is so effed up in the first place. Mm-hmm. When social media was so unregulated yes. and so new, and they were just on it constantly, they would mourn their family members on Facebook. Yeah, they would, yeah. you know, and they just didn't know where to place these things. And um, and you know, they they'll be fine. They're okay. I'm sure Le- they will Lena be fine. Dunham, you know, Lena Dunham gives me hope for the millennials. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's just it's just very interesting because when I look back at my time and uh, I, I look back and I remember I didn't have a lot of the ability to process my feelings. I mm-hmm. didn't have that place, that grounding, that grounding place. Like mm-hmm. learning how to meditate is would be yes. such a great tool for any young person. Yeah. I think that it should be a class. It they're, should they're be starting a class. It. Yeah. They're starting it in some PE in good and schools. Stuff. They are, yeah, yeah. Like we have yeah, yoga in ours, which I think yeah. is a big deal. We it's never great. had no, that. It's great. Yeah. But along with yoga, should naturally come yeah. meditation. Yeah, it should be meditation. That's why you know, we talk about the show Westworld, which I'm obsessed with. Oh, my husband's been watching it. I haven't. I, I just it. love it so much because. Because it deconstructs the idea of being a human on this planet. It, mm. it, it You have to consider yourself as a machine. And the thoughts that you think and everything that right. – every original idea you've ever had yeah. was actually placed there. Yeah. And when you look at it from that standpoint, as you yeah. would in meditation, you get to be objective and you, you don't have to take life so seriously. And that's, that's wonderful. That's exactly right. That's what cognitive behavioral therapy is too, right. is right? It's like kind of reprogramming your, your thought processes that don't serve you. You can right. keep the ones – that serve you sure. by all means, but yeah. just yeah, the ones that don't serve you, just get just challenge them. And you know, kids are all cute and cuddly, and I love them. And I'd be afraid <laughs> that I would fall way too in love with my well, kids. You would. That's it. But, that's it. Yeah, but the would. real key, and as an observer and having been a kid myself, I know that the parent has to grow with the kid, and the parent has to be willing to let go of the the old relationship that you had is where this person needs you to feed them oh. and to keep them warm to move on to a place where you are what's the Gahil Gabron thing of um yeah. the, the, you have to uh serve them you have to uh, be a guardian of theirs mm-hmm. yeah. there's all these other things that most parents do not uh, do not graduate too. They right. want to keep the relationship the way it was when right. I, you. They you needed you all. so. Hard. You're talking ninety nine percent, not most. Yeah. yeah. The majority of parents are me. One of them. Yeah, I fight it every day. Me too. Yeah. It's natural. It's it's it, it is. I mean, everything is this crazy struggle of like. Oh, I want you to grow because that's what loving you is, is wanting you to grow. But at the same time, I want to keep you here because, right. you know, or, you know, or dealing with control. Like, yep. you, you know, you know that we all like I know we all do better when I let control like go yeah, of control. Absolutely. And we just leave, you know, the day up to whatever the, it'll be. But at the same time, it's your job to discipline. Sure. It's your job, you know, to to let them know what's right and wrong and all that stuff, too. So it's like, well. What's in my control and what's not? I'm right. kind of confused. Yeah. Well, like, that's where yeah. that's where the balance comes in. That's yeah. why meditation and that perspective yeah. that you have when you sort of go outside of your body and you yeah. look at the whole landscape. That's what that does. It mm-hmm. creates a balance so you can do both. Right. You can do both simultaneously. Yeah. I remember when I was a, a little gay child in San Diego. I I understood what it meant to 
absolutely love something with all my heart yeah. and simultaneously hate it yeah. with my very core. Right. Yeah. And that balance is what this world is. Yeah. Yin, yang, night, day, but totally. male, female. That's totally. what it is. So being able to have that perspective is really what it's really all about. Gosh. So it's Claire and what's the other one's name? Clara and uh, and Penny. Penelope, but people Aww, we call her Penny. That penny. Yeah. I so love cute. that penny. And guess, people and don't, don't want to fuck she a penny. Has, well, that's sorry. true. That's, sorry. Well, but she also, she has copper hair, so it's Aww. like a copper penny. It's crazy. And I didn't know that was going to happen. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That, you didn't know that. So you don't know who the father is. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's all, you know, he's got his Chinese hair, and then these kids come out with like this oh my red God. light. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> now, when we're talking about you being, uh, you were a, a child star. Everybody got to know you from the movie My Girl sure. and stuff, even other stuff even before that yeah, but um, no, my girl was it yeah, yeah. um <laughs> yeah the big one how when you see that when you go back and see that what what do, where does your brain go immediately when was the last time you saw it i would i mean i would venture to say at, i mean 10 years ago maybe i don't uh-huh. watch it when it's on and i yeah. don't yeah i i don't know i mean it's 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 like watching home movies yeah a, you know and it's um I was 10, so I have some memories of backstage stuff or backstage. Uh-huh. Of, I'm such a theater. Yes. Yeah. Behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Off camera. Um, but, but yeah, I, it's, it's never what people want to hear. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It's like everyone always wants to hear things about it. And I'm just like, it's not, I, I, I just remember how, you know, like I loved the, the, the boom guy, David Odell, uh-huh. who like uh-huh. held the boom and like, it, uh-huh. you know, you just, it's like family. It's. Um, so yeah, for me, it's, I, I don't have, um, the same kind of connection that other people do to it as a story, Yeah, you know, cause it was just me doing this thing. You know? I wonder what that does to a, a human. We talk yeah. about the, the show Westworld and we talk about, you know, um, meditating and seeing yourself from an outer perspective. I wonder what that does to a child when you, they live in this uh, parallel universe of mm-hmm. a movie set or mm-hmm. in, and then it lives forever. So you can yeah. actually go back and revisit it. It's weird. And you don't really actually remember being there. Or identify with well, that younger you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's what's, that's the strangest thing is that other people, and it, it this movie meant a lot to a lot of people, yes. which is really cool. That was r- nice when we all turned into adults uh-huh. yeah. and people could actually express that to me. Mm-hmm. Like before maybe the age of 18, the age of 20, people would just kind of like sing the song at me and like it was boring and it was annoying and whatever. But then those, <laughs> you know, maybe those same people, once we were adults, could be like, oh, my friend died and I saw that movie and it allowed me to really process it all or, you know, things like that. And And then mm-hmm. you're like. Oh, right. like mm. this mattered to you. Oh, yes. now I get it. Right. Yeah. You know, um, and so, you know, but at the same token, people can watch it yesterday. And mm. that's, you know, Veda. And that's who whoever Veda, whomever Veda is to these people, right. they can have that right now if they want yes. by, by renting it. Whereas I can't, you know, like mm-hmm. that's not, I, I can't go and access that person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also can't be that for them. So like when people, True. so when people come up and they're like, oh my God, you know, it's you and I love it and this and that, you're like, thank you. But then there's always this kind of like, they want it to continue. Yes. They want it to, you know, they want you to be you probably go through that a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because, um, I, you know, I play this yes. character and I'm really, I, I'm really not that. Right. And actually, I get sometimes I'll, I'll get, I'll be out in public or I'll be with people and all of a sudden there be, there's a tension on me and I get really nervous because I think, oh my God, they're going to want me to be a certain be thing and my, my yeah. machine starts going, wait a minute, I, how can I, I, I'm, yeah. I can't be that thing right now. I can't right please now. you. Right. I'm sorry. I can't yeah. please you right, right. now. Like I yeah. can't get, it's impossible. I would if I could. Yes. You know, because we're, we, you know, we're entertainers and we want, you know, to, to provide. <laughs> yes. Right. But yeah. It's, and, and that's one of the reasons why. You know, I sometimes get a little bit of flack from for this, but that's why after a play, like I'll, I actually don't go out right. um, after the show. I, I'm I'm one of the ones who goes out the back because, yeah. and and like if people are waiting in the beginning of the you know at backstage or I'm like you don't wait for somebody at a real estate office right. yeah. to do their job. Like why are you waiting for me to do yeah. my well, job? To be yeah. fair, it's yeah. a public job versus a real estate I, yeah, office. You no, know no, what I mean? it's true. I've heard that. Yeah. I've definitely heard. But but I understand me, what you're saying yeah, too. Yeah, but for, you know, but that's one of the reasons why it's like well we. The, the curtain comes up and this is our moment yeah. and this is our relationship and this is what we're going to do. And then the curtain comes down and we bow. We thank each other. Yeah. And and now I'm going to go home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But as you know, <laughs> yeah, but as yeah, you know, you people 
because of this world of social media that we live in, and yeah. I know it's always happened at the theater, but yeah. not with such passion and almost rabid it's energy. Yeah, 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 that yeah. that in, that people think, well, I just paid to see you, so the right. least right. you can do yeah. is. But they don't. They're not understanding that yeah. the bow. That was what you paid for. That's it. Yeah, That's exactly. the end. Well, that's, you know, it's so interesting. Yeah. And that thank whole... you. And like, it's like thank you. Of you know, course. There's no. There's no sense of like you know. I don't. Wanna, I agree. Yeah. You know. There's no it, lack it, of it, un- not yeah, gratitude. Yeah. Not at all. It's yeah. you know. But there's. But yeah. It's um. But the relate. That's where it, it's well, sanctioned. But, it's a sanctioned place. You yeah. know. For. For our relationship. Well, you know? that's the thing is that, you know, <laughs> the people in it just not just in the show business or in the theater sure. have a hard time balancing reality from fantasy. Yes. And that's yeah. why the show Westworld again <laughs> come. It's yeah. such a I deep can't show. Wait to watch it. Because I, mean, I have to give it another shot. Yeah, I need to. Yeah. You, yeah. you have to watch from the beginning, but it, ba- it, it, it really ex- uh, explores the balance between what is real and what is not real. Mm-hmm. And it really depends on you and your mm-hmm. perspective. I always, you know, when I'm in a restaurant, I've got a mouthful of french fries and somebody comes over it's like you wouldn't do that to the family dog you know why because the dog will bite your ass <laughs> yes. you just wouldn't yes. do it you know yes. better you know yes. that this is the pri- this is the moment where yes and, and it always starts with the, i don't want to bother you do, or if they do then it's it's on you then right it's like oh and the dog does bite you well you shouldn't have gone you up, to that, have gone up yeah, to that dog yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, i think yeah. on the other side i'm gonna play the devil's advocate for the person that's going you know that's looked up to you their whole life you know and they go this is this is mm-hmm. I'm not going to throw away my shot. This is it. Mm. This is my one chance. Oh, well, there is a lobby in the restaurant. You can wait right there. Be oh, I see guest. what you're right, saying. For right, sure. Right. I, well, I'm going to come out there yeah. and I'm, I'll yeah. be as sweet and nice, but not when I'm with my motherfucking, yeah. my, my Harold's I get it. Waffles. I get it. If I'm at <laughs> Harold's Chicken and Waffles, <laughs> you know, I People will, don't think past that, though. They yeah. don't think past that. And I that's, understand that. That's where the... That's where the disconnect. That's where yeah. the where the they don't understand the bow is the finale. Right. They don't understand. Wait till you're done eating and then right. maybe, you know, wait till when you come out. So there's there is an entitlement issue because of how easy everybody is to connect with these days. It's, right. it's crossed over the I think, border. I think it always existed too though. I mean I yes. you know, like my God love him, my father. Um you know, he, he never he like he does not deal with social media or Facebook or anything, but he still to this day thinks that he deserves to meet, you know, like, you know, the Pope, if the Pope is there. And he's like, well, it's me. It's me. <laughs> I'm going to meet the bitch. Doesn't he want to know yeah. who I am? And it's like, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But that, that it's always been around. a little different because you do actually yes. have to reach out. But, you know, but but, um, you know, any, sure. any famous person, my dad will kind of do that. And that's, you know, he grew up loving Jane Powell. And like, I'm sure if he ever met Jane Powell, it's, well, I have to meet Jane Powell. Yeah. Yeah. This because is my she, chance. Because she's the one who I, you know, who yeah. I loved. And it's like, well, she doesn't know who you were. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. My box has been known to be subscription. <laughs> An epic geek, yes, too. Yes, I love a geek. I just love the concept of loot crate, Michelle. I love Ugh. the idea of really giving yourself a gift every single month of something that you really are passionate about. Yeah. Some people are passionate about Harry Potter or or Marvel Comics yep. or, or Fallout 4, yep. whatever it is. You join the subscription box service, Loot Crate, and you get a gift of something you really love and it's really good every month. Yeah, and it's for less than 20 bucks a month. You're going to get six to eight items that include licensed gear, apparel, collectibles, unique one-of-a-kind items. I got this really cute um, uh, Edward Scissorhands t-shirt. Uh, Lily's got this Futurama stuff. She's really into anime. There was some, uh, you know, stuff that she got in there. I, I don't know the name of the anime, but I sign up for the stuff specifically for her and it comes every month and she looks forward to getting it and tearing that box open. I tell you, it's the little things that make life worth living and we're talking some really great t-shirts in every single crate. Yeah, but Rue, they also have stuff like if you're not into that for you or you are, but you don't want it for yourself, there's a pet box. I think that is genius. It is the cutest thing. So you go on to LootCrate.com, you guys. You can click on where it says pick a crate. There's the Loot Crate, Loot Crate DX for something a little, you know, more fancy or fancier, whichever one it is. Uh, The Loot Anime, Loot Gaming, Loot Pets, Loot Wear, which is the clothing. And you could choose and kind of tailor it to what you like and what your specifications are. Your little pet animal can get something sweet every single month. And and a little t-shirt, too. And a little (laughs) t-shirt. I think it's such a great 
great gift. If it's not for yourself, give it to someone else. Yes. It's a great gift for someone who you know who has a gorgeous pet. Yeah. Go to lootcrate.com slash are you. Use that offer code, honey. It's Rue. Go there today. And get $3 off any new subscription. I love it. Do it. Just like Rue said. Best gift ever. And you know what? Treat yourself. Okay, we are back with Anna Klumski, and we're going to talk about Chicago. All right. All right. What you are over it, but what was it about it before you were over oh, it? Oh, how many people am I going to insult? I well, think, that's, we don't, don't want to insult you. Don't have to no, no, I know, I know. Well, I well, but but you know, if it's true, yeah. I I I think it it's a little bit of a Napoleon complex, frankly, oh. because of New York, because it's Second City. Yeah, oh. I think that you know when I grew up in Chicago, I was like, yeah, like yeah. I, you know, I was very. Very the Bears. Chicago pride. Oh, right. Bears, yeah. Bulls, everything. Well, that, I mean, fair enough. That was like the that was an easy of the one. Bulls. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh God, uh-huh. it was heaven for the Bulls. Um, but the nineties, like Bulls. Yes, mm-hmm. Michael Jordan, three Scotty Pippen. Pippen. I mean, I had every yeah. three peat shirt. It was crazy. Uh huh. But and now Cubs. I'm. I am. I'm like I was crying when I'm watching the Cubs win. And I, you know. did you see how I threw in the Michael Jordan thing? Like yes. I knew I was yeah. talking about. You did, but you were right. Is that the only one? Totally right. What number did he wear? Go. Twenty three. Yeah. Come on, bro. But yeah, so it's like super, super proud. But it was always because I would go someplace else and they'd be like, oh, New York's more important. I'm like, Mm. no, Chicago's important. But, you know, Uh but at the same time, it's like, I don't know, in the 80s, like all the John Hughes movies were being done. I got it. It was a little bit. It, it, I don't know if it's my own perspective growing up there or if it really was true that it was a little bit more important, (laughs) Uh uh Um, you know, in the 80s and 90s. But uh but, yeah, I think that that's what it is. It's like this right. puffed chest kind of, um, you know. And also, I, it's it's the biggest working class town we've got. Yeah. So it's like it's it, it has, to me, more akin with Boston or Baltimore or Philly where, you know, it's it's got a lot of these um, – insular groups that grew up and had to have their own jobs and had to and had to struggle like with whether it be you know in the no irish need apply days or whether mm-hmm. it was you know um the italians stick with the italians the irish stick with the irish the blacks stick with the black and mm-hmm. it's like it's very bird of a feather is what i call it mm-hmm. and as a result i mean chicago now you know Tanahisi Coates has blown the the lid off of the whole thing with the atlantic article mm-hmm. where it's like yeah it's freaking segregated mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's freaking racist like yeah. it's you know it's um it's got a lot to 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 you know kind of wrestle with. Yeah. Well, you know, it's I, I, and that's that's what I've experienced when I've there. I, I people are so lovely to me. They've always been really good. That's but right. I've I've always tried to understand what the what the Chicago Pride was and why it existed. There's a fight. It's there like we want to fight all the time. Well, you know, I, I <laughs> once I was doing a gig Kevin there, Dunn and I talk about it. But all it's the time. true. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I I wanted to go down to the south side to this wig shop. So I jumped on the train to go down there. I got off the train and it didn't take long for me to realize I was in a real tough part of yeah, town. Yeah you were. And I, I there was such hostility in, in and it was a warm. It wasn't cold. It was warm, and um, hmm. and I only had a little bit of time. I could not get back on that. I did go to the wig shop. I, I lo- sort of looked around You're real like, quick. Where is it? I'm yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's like, oh, yeah. like come here. <laughs> and I oh, ran the hell ran out of there. Back wow. to that train to get on that train because yeah. there was a certain hostility that yeah. I couldn't understand. Yeah. Even the, the people who were walking around. Um, um, I did not feel safe. No, yeah, but there's it's, certain it's sections of New York City that are the same way. Which too. sections? That's true. But, but look, not 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 Bushwick anymore. No, no. no well, I haven't been That's to Brooklyn in you a very in Bushwick? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it used time. to be. Yeah, I used but to. But upper Upper West Side, not not Harlem, but Spanish Harlem. I would feel sometimes mm. not anymore. Mm-hmm. It's gotten so much better. But I think because each section, um, uh, you know nationality wise yeah. had to fight for that's their it. section yeah. That's, yeah. True, yeah. that's it and yeah. they they lay even italian sections like mm-hmm. in the bronx arthur avenue they mm-hmm. lay claim and they don't want or anybody benson hurst yeah. too yeah. bay mm-hmm. ridge they don't mm-hmm. want people yeah. taking it away yeah. from them so i think the hostility comes from you are not one of us right this is ours stop fucking mm-hmm. with our shit mm-hmm. hasidic neighborhoods too hasidic neighborhods too yeah. everybody's because got their we built own our own community russian this too we do it yeah yeah yeah. So I think that's where the hostility comes from. Is the thing your, is with you know, New York, though, even if you're in one of those neighborhoods, I mean, and this I'm speaking as somebody who looks like a Russian or, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I am Slavic, so I can go to like Sheep's Head Bay or, um, or Brighton Beach and, and not feel that way. But 
and I am sobbing, so that's why. But um, but I do feel like there's there's warmth in a crowd in a way, mm-hmm. like in in Chicago or in um, Baltimore or you know some of these smaller towns. There are just fewer people on the street, mm-hmm. so you feel like if something happened, if something went down. You're stuck. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, and and again, I don't want to speak ignorantly, but because plenty of people are stuck in a in an altercation sure. in New York, but you do have a sense of like, well, there are people around. Yeah, like there's at least people around. I can slip out. I can do. You know what I mean? There's yeah. there. Yeah, you just feel safer kind of in a crowd. And, yeah, well, when you, you know, first come out here to L.A. too, you know, I'm from San Diego, so I'm very used to it. Mm-hmm. But like at night in your car and you're walking to your car, there because there's no one around, no. there is a real weirdness. It's weird. Yeah. As, and as a female, like when I walk around. I don't like it. When I, when I get to my car or if I just want to walk, like just mm-hmm. because I'm in New York and I want to walk, like you'll get whistled at. You'll get like I feel so much are safer. Like, Why are you walking? And you're like because I have two legs. You yeah. mean here in LA? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah. It's true. Well, because when people want to walk here, they will go on a hike or they will walk yes. around Lake Hollywood exactly. or do a walking it's, place. No, I'm going to drive, drive to, to a walk. walking yeah. place. It's true. It's crazy. <laughs> there was actually an article in the paper a couple of weeks ago uh, where Matthew McC- M- Matthew Modine. Uh, mm. Talked about, I know, mm, mm. right? Uh, talked about. <laughs> I bet you he's one of you. I bet oh, you he's one. Yes. Okay. He always I'm has getting been. it now. I'm getting always it. Now. Has yeah. Been. Yeah. Always has. Yeah, we've both been on that one. Yes, yes. And Jeff Goldblum's another one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. have a theory that Amy Brookheimer, my character, has a crush on Jeff Goldblum. Ooh. Well, it's, it's a good theory. <laughs> it's a good Go one. Yeah. But he, uh, he, this article is all about his walking in L.A. He's on Sh- Stranger Brighter Stranger Things. things. Stranger Things. Mm. Uh, and he walked, he said he, he would, in the article, he said he would walk from Venice to Beverly Hills. Yeah, mm-hmm. because he, if you think about him in New York City, because yeah. he's a big New York City boy, yeah. he bicycles everywhere. Yeah. 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 So you come to L.A., it's really like being a New Yorker, you and I. I grew up walking everywhere. I'd walk yeah. from where I lived on 75th sure. and Broadway yeah. down to the village. Yeah. So you do it yeah. now and you are looked at with the craziest screw faces. It's weird. It's yeah. very yeah. strange. Well, and it's also like, it's also it, not convenient. You no. Know, and that's my, I, I think I was like, I would, con, I would complain from my Bushwick apartment with my newborn. I'm like, oh, it's so much to mobilize and leave my apartment to go to the bodega. Or uh-huh. And I'm like, no, now that I'm staying, I'm staying here for four months to shoot. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is mobilizing. Like, Correct. this is, yeah. oh my gosh, like having to get all all the kids in the uh, car yeah. to yes. go anywhere, regardless of. I mean, yeah. I'm. What part of town are you in here in L.A.? Um, in Beechwood Canyon. Uh huh. It, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. easy. It's easy breezy. You go down to the uh, Gelsons and uh, yep, there's, there's a, the there's, Gelsons. There's they a, have a lovely yogurt they're selling sure. there now. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's that's easy. But you know, I've been recording downtown, and I'm here in in West Hollywood, mm-hmm. and. Um, to go downtown. <laughs> now uh, I've been taking La Cienega to the 10 and the 10 into downtown because I'm, I'm, I'm recording in uh, the Arts District, okay. which is this weird little section that's really blowing up right now and it's fabulous over there. I love but, that. But um, you've got to figure out these ways to maneuver LA. I can't. Yeah. I, I'm stuck on the 101. I know you stuck. are. Stuck. There's know. nowhere, you can't, you can't take the, the 118. Or... I was going to ask, you can't do the canyon roads or whatever? Uh, like, you, listen to me yes. like acting like I know. Like I get here <laughs> I do not canyon. know either. Me I know neither. nothing. Me neither. And people say, oh, it's on the southeast corner. I'm like, is that the right or the left? I don't know. I'm like, you can't take, you just you can't. Don't tell a New Yorker it's the far right the corner. Cube? No. No, you can't. Although I am dying to try the train because I do have a friend who lives in uh, South Pasadena and he takes the train. He yeah, takes the train a all lot the time. Of and do. I really, I, mean, I, I support it I so much take, that they're yeah. doing it. I want to take the train here in LA downtown to the arts district. Yes. But you know what it would take? Okay, so I'd have to get on a shuttle to go over to Hollywood Highland. Yes. Mm. Then I would get on the train to go to Union Station. Yep. And then I would take a dash See. bus to go over to the arts. No, Hence it, my you know point. what town is like that? Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo oh, really? is like that. Not it's, it's convenient. Spread, ooh, hello, Mike. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's spread but all this, over. It's spread out all over. And if you want to take public transportation, no hotel will teach you. They will just tell right. you to be in traffic for an hour. Yes. Yeah. Because you have to like go on a train next to like a river that smells like sewage. And yeah. then you have to go and wait in like a round line to get into a van that's yeah. a public van. That's not convenient. But it's not convenient. It but you should... know what? When you're a tourist, it's so much better than yeah. being in traffic yeah. for an hour. Well, it should. there should be a universal. We should all come to an agreement that we've got to do public transport because it's so much better for everybody. Yeah. We were in San Francisco, uh, not last weekend, we weekend before last and we caught a train the BART out to South 
Berkeley to see to have a theater experience uh, yes, where they yeah. served chicken and waffles in the theater. I mean, which George, it, George was in heaven. He <laughs> thought it was the, his favorite theater experience ever. Does he more, remember more, the show? Yeah, well, it was Unforgettable, <laughs> okay. a Natalie Cole story. Love it. Oh. That's what it was called. <laughs> Love it. And it was brilliant. But um, we, it the, for the bar train, they have a thing where if you're going to South Berkeley, yeah. you have to calculate when you buy your ticket oh, how much it's going to cost to go like, there. Yeah, that's like uh, the tube or that's like yeah. uh, in Metro in D.C. Yeah. It's not a flat fee. It's yeah. like... Please give Tokyo's me a Tokyo's like that too. Yeah, yeah. Give me. Like that. I will pay a flat free so right. I can go wherever I right. want, whenever right. I want for the no. day. Yes, that's craziness. Yes. Yeah. Some people. It's, it's, some people are fans of each. It's. It, it depends on the city and where and where people go. It's a very. It's a flow thing. I think it's a way for the transit authority to make more money because to go to um, it was a four dollars and thirty four cents mm-hmm, say mm-hmm. to go to South uh, Berkeley. Okay. But. You couldn't buy of that amount. You right. had to buy a five dollar ticket, and of course, uh-huh. I didn't use the whole five dollar. Right, right, so they right, get right. a little yeah. bit extra. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's no, that's, that's the way. rotten. Yeah, that's but the that's way. The, that's why they deter people from taking. Yes, that's right. why that's because true. people go, if you just see my metro card and I'm going to put fifty dollars on it, you just leave the same thing every yeah. way. Yeah, then that's what it would be. Well, when they yeah. start changing stuff and this, this, and this, yeah, right. people it, and they try to game it, and, and it is expensive. Yeah. 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 And people start adding well, up. I did take the shuttle from West Hollywood. Hollywood to Hollywood and Highland because I wanted to go and see um, Carol King's Beautiful at oh. the Pantages Theater. Oh, nice. You didn't drive. I didn't drive. I got on the Dash, which, not, yeah, it's, I think it's Dash. called Dash yeah. okay. or something. And it's free, right? So oh, I, um, I there was one other person on the bus Shut with up. me. Shut up. And I go to the back of the bus because, you know, that's how I roll. Oh, you are so you know, stupid. I put my hand oh, down. Oh, you're right. Thank you, Rosa. <laughs> I put so- my hand down to sit down. And the seat was wet. soaking wet. <laughs> did you not please? I didn't know what the liquid was. Uh-uh. Did, you I did not know. Know. Don't Don't want want to know. want to know. It's at That's the lab okay. as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a forensics on it oh right now. God. But uh, I thankfully didn't put my butt in yeah. it. I put my hand in it. So I had to, of course, wait to get to the theater to wash my hand. But it's just that thing of why can't we think, you know, I don't want to go to the election and talk about this. But when you think about the narrative collectively, we as humans on this planet have been f- fortifying for years and years to bring our race of people up into the future so that mm. there's equality, there is love, there's liberty, all of those good things mm. that we have been raised to believe that we Abandoned this mm. past election to to do you know and those it did well, not everybody it. I mean I like not how you everybody. collectively yes. take ownership of this yes. I don't I have a feeling you didn't yeah yeah no yeah. I did not no yeah, neither did I um, never, yeah so you know. <laughs> It's just so I think the transit storyline and the traffic, especially in L.A., mm-hmm. is part of that. It's like we have got to get smarter about this. I, we, I agree. The great minds have mm-hmm. thought about this and thought, yeah. you know, make it right. Make it better. Yeah. Do not go backwards. Right. Don't go backwards. Yeah. And speaking of this election, just a side note, does Veep follow? Are you going to follow it? Like is Selena going to be Hillary? Have like no how? idea. Mm. I actually have no idea. We took... I, th- I think this was just an emotional thing. We took a, a, a surprise hiatus. We have those every season, though, mm-hmm. um, for writing. Like, we got the, the the email, like, the day after the election. So, like, mm-hmm. I you know, I, I don't think that it was because things have to get changed. I don't know. I mm-hmm. think everyone was just sad. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And they wanted to get funny again, you know, and, and, and feel better. But, um, but, you know, the beauty of how our show works is that we've never – married to parodying any one particular person right. Right. um and and i i personally think that that's what's um that's when our show is strongest is when we are satirizing politics and power relationships and office relationships as a whole as opposed to just kind of lambasting one particular person yeah um so i can't imagine that that they'll change that um especially when I think everything will speak for itself in the next four years. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. However, I do think that we, you know, I had a woman stop me and then I texted Julia about it um, in, in, at the juice store because uh-huh. um, I'm in L.A. Of course. and um, But juice is good. But she said, uh, she told me, she was like, you know, I don't stop people when I see them in life. But t- given this week, this was the election week, she said, given this week, I just want to let you know how important I think your show is. Mm. And we both started crying. Yeah. And um, 
And she just, you know, and she said, it would, especially for women and, um, you know, and so it, it does kind of fortify f- for me. And I know it did for Julie when I texted her this story that it's important to satirize. It is important to to have something, some outlet where we can both look um, with with kind of a, a, a scathing and and intelligent view towards what's happening but at the same time allow us the escape valve to laugh uh-huh. yeah. you know yeah. so have to laugh you have you know, to laugh uh, well, us and Vonnegut <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right no it's true it's Hopefully. very it's very important because you know I, I, this will be the third time I've mentioned uh, Westworld uh, Please. in this podcast <laughs> what's but, that show yeah uh, but you know this show um, the Veep Westworld and and Scandal and a, a lot of the shows that I'm attracted to in fact drag for that matter yeah. are things that uncover that take the lid off of something that other people hold very serious Yes. You know, drag uh, takes the lid off of identity. You yes. know, and politics. I, I love the idea of these shows that where they go behind the scenes. They go inside of the minds of the mm-hmm. of the. And I love when politicians should say, "Well, the American people want," and we know <laughs> what that means. Right. It's the hoi polloi, yeah. and it's uh, uh, I'm attracted to these shows because y- you you get inside the, the real minds of who who. Who's behind these policies? Mm Because they really don't believe it. They have to sort of... Right. Walk this thin line. No, they don't believe it. They no. don't believe any of it. So when you get to when you go to DC, I mean, it's a job. It's a job. And you know, people uh, who don't live there are like so surprised when they find out that like a Republican is married to a Democrat. Like, right. how can that be? Yeah. And it's right. like because they don't care. Yeah. And because you know, because it ain't that serious, babe. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's not. I mean, up to, up, up till now, it hasn't right. been extreme. It's you know, it's a, you don't usually get the votes <laughs> unless you're towards the middle. And so they kind of believe the same things for mm-hmm. a long time. We'll see what happens now. But yeah. that, yeah, it's, um, you know, it, it is a job. And it's and that's what I loved. I've always loved about our shows. It's like take the gods and monsters out of this. Yes. Mm. Take the, you know, the, these aren't superheroes and supervillains. Like we're it's they're not re- supernatural. They are real people. This is I love what the, happens. I love how yeah. cynical they are. That's, in it's, it. it's necessary. I, I, yeah. I love how they <laughs> they really they're making fun of the whole process of the of the way the voters see this as um as real life yeah. and they have to sort of play along it's like yeah. the, you know the your well, because show because it's power they want it's power they want and in our de- and in a democracy that's how you get it it's a currency it's a it's, cur- yeah. that's right yeah. that's right the politicians will say what they want to get that power mm-hmm. and i love on veep and on scandal where in a way they allow us they break the fourth wall with us and they say okay they, they you they close the doors and yeah. they go okay how we're going to figure this out yeah. you know because the old the, the old uh, uh, Joe and Betty Beer can are going to think yeah. this. So how do we work around yeah. that template? I right? love how you. I love how you you compared that to drag though as well. My my husband and I were were uh, we were catching up on season eight the other day, ah. and he was talking about how. And he, he's like, this does remind me of Vonnegut. This does remind me of Dolly because mm-hmm. it's absurdism. Exactly. It's absurdism. That's and, right. and it's and and absurdism isn't just being irreverent. It's not just being a toddler. It's not being stupid. It's being like absurd is not stupid. Absurd is taking something that that exists and just flipping it yes. on its head, like you said, maybe even breaking a fourth wall yeah. and just calling it out. That's right. Like just call shit out. That's you know? exactly what it yeah. is, and that's yeah. what makes. And it, we hope to that's do that. Why too. I'm that's what we love. Attracted yeah. Yeah. to it because it's, um, you know, for us as sweet, sensitive souls. A lot of times, the the sanctuary that we seek is in the irreverent, in the cynicism, mm-hmm. sometimes in, in the anger and bitterness. Yeah. The the key though is to move beyond that into the laughter and have having fun with it mm-hmm. because that is where that's a place you can live if you yes. stay in that bitterness. It will eat you from you'll the die. inside. Yes, you'll die. You'll die. That li- life it, it can only it can only grow from joy. Yes, and love. That's and, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, it has been a joy <laughs> and a lovely experience meeting you. Likewise on this podcast. Wow, what a great great gal you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. And what a great, <laughs> I'm flattered and blushing. And all you know, this. I got to say, Penny and and Clara are very very lucky to have you. I yeah, think they well. have. 
they they have a, a, a head start with being able to get in touch with their feelings and understanding what it's like to be a human on this planet. Thank you. You have no idea what that means to someone who's postpartum right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're only four months out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's Thank true. you. It's That's, absolutely true. I'm going to take that with me. Good. On my bad days. Good. And on good days. <laughs> well, Anna Klumski. I would love talking to you. And Michelle, love, Darling, love talking to you, always. my dear. Until next time, my yes, love. Baby. Bye. Bye. Can I get an amen? <laughs> can I get an amen? If you can't love yourself, how in the hell you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen? And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell you gonna love somebody else? Amen. Hey, hey,